<laughs> to reality TV star and wedding planner goddess, the fabulous Charlie Bertram. And she loves working with couples to make their wedding dreams come true. What she doesn't love is having cameras following her all the time, especially when she's crushing hard on the lawyer from another floor. Robert Bertram doesn't like planning weddings. He doesn't like being on TV either, but when he finds himself in possession of Nellie's diary, he thinks he can turn her into anyone's dream girl, even for a lawyer from another floor. Sunday spot, one that Nellie and I visit a lot. Touristy as it is, the cafe always smells of chocolate and has good seating that overlooks San Francisco Bay. What's the harm? Rob shrugs, putting on a pair of sunglasses as they sit together on the patio. San Francisco always has the perfect weather. Balmy and cool enough for cardigans, but bright enough for sunglasses. Mama and her gaggle of cameramen won't be back until late. Uh, plus, Vaughn told me a lot about the Knowles way. He gives her a pointed look. One that seemed to tell Nelly everything she needed to know about his thoughts on the subject. She waves off his look with her hand. Let's not talk about your mother. She sighs, knowing that she would be treading on thin ice. Rob isn't exactly his mother's biggest fan. Everyone knows he would have preferred to work somewhere other than in Charleston, but ever since his parents got divorced, Robert thinks it's his duty as a son to stay with his mother until, well, until whatever. Where were you this weekend, by the way? That photo you posted on Instagram is insanely blurry. You nearly broke the internet with the number of people asking what the heck is going on. 
Nellie asks him, sipping her frozen hot chocolate, licking her lips in satisfaction. Rob's eyebrows shot up and shoot up in surprise. The downside of being an Instagram Tumblr famous illustrator is that he can't go anywhere without almost breaking the internet. I just like posting things that I do. Rob shrugs. Chuckling like he couldn't believe his own fame. 100,000 followers all freaking out about a guy who might have accidentally pressed post on his otherwise carefully curated accounts. It's weird. Well, nice to know someone is worried about me. He points out, checking his phone and realizing that the photo is, in fact, blurry. Rob chuckles like it isn't a, ba isn't a big deal, shaking his head as Nellie took a sip of her chocolate. Mmm, this is really good. But seriously though, you had me just a little worried, Nelly says, frowning a bit as she glances at him. I know if I suddenly vanished, it would it wouldn't be I can make it up to you. Rob suddenly says, rummaging through his backpack before grinning triumphantly when he manages to retrieve whatever it was he was looking for. He hands it to Nelly with reverence, her eyebrows her eyebrow quirks as she studies the item. Oh, she exclaims, her face breaking into a grin as big as Rob's. You were in London? Yep. He answers, leaning back on his chair, crossing one leg over the other like he knew that he was the coolest guy in California. I was there for the weekend. Oh, of course, I didn't forget about you. <laughs> now he gives Rob a quick glance before studying the sticker in her hand. It is a plain red circle with a blue line through it, the logo of the London on Underground. She carefully peels off the backing of the sticker, placing it inside her planner on the day's date. Rob's eyes flicker quickly to the colored warp pages of the inside of the otherwise plain day book. He catches glimpses of the stickers he got her from Bali, from France, from Tokyo Disneyland, and a few of her own watercolor in illustrations. That black planner is practically an extension of her body already. Thanks, Rob, she says with a soft smile. As always, it has that hint of self-consciousness behind it, like she doesn't want to admit to herself that she got the present. It is so sincere that Rob would not have been surprised if the sun shone right behind her head, illuminating her in some kind of halo. Why she doesn't seem to see herself that way is beyond him. Suddenly, her phone starts to ring, snapping them both out of their hot chocolate haze. Without checking who it is, Nellie picks up and politely says hello. The screen splits into two, showing Nellie on one side, with Rob in the cafe, and Charlotte on the other side. It's a bit unclear, but it looks like she's at the office. Nellie, sweetheart, glad I caught you, Charlotte exclaims. She straightens her back just a bit more as she stands in the corner of her office underneath the best lighting. lighting. I noticed you aren't at your desk. <laughs> yes. Sorry, Nellie says from her, the si from her side of the screen. Already st standing up and scrambling to get her things together and ready to leave. The camera br briefly shifts to Rob as he remains sitting, ignoring the conversation. I just stepped up with Rob for a cup of coffee. Rob is here! <laughs> Charlotte explains, like Nellie is talking about an extremely cute bunny rabbit and not her adult son. <laughs> That's perfect! I you both back here in the office too. Sweet. We're on our way back, Charlotte. See you, Nellie says at the end of the conversation. Uh, um, yes. Mercy. She has the worst French accent I've ever heard. <laughs> and it gives me endless joy to think that my mother has encouraged Nellie to speak pigeon French. French. <laughs> Mama's Nelly on the leash, just like Nelly has me. Yeah. Back at the cafe, Rob tosses money on the table as payment and nudges his head back toward his car. His bun has come loose and reddish brown strands of hair spill over his shoulders. Come on, petty shoe. Rob laughs, <laughs> slinging his jacket over his shoulder as he swaggers over to the wrought iron arch that led out of Pirardelli Square. He smiles over at her and gives her a big, exaggerated wink. <laughs> Let's see what Mama wants. 